This is RPG Dad. RPG Nate. And welcome to our Weekly Encounters Wrap-Up. We'll be talking about week four of... What the hell's the name of this thing? Red Wizards, Dead and Thay. Dreams of the Red Wizards. Yeah. So, he had a little bit from week three to finish up, and then we'll talk about week four real quick. Yeah. So, this video, we ended with my party getting to the White Mall. Uh-huh. Uh, when they're there, they don't realize what's happening as the... Uh, entrances and exits close up because the white maw is trapping them inside. Now is it a mouth and a butthole that close up or what happens there? No, <laughs> really. No, it's actually just there are three doorways going into the room and the white maw just closes these. Alright, so explain this and uh, I got an issue with the way they did this but then again the party couldn't survive if they did it right. Yeah, but uh, the white maw just had like tentacle attacks where they came up and originally it would have just been one attack. But the white mall is the room. It's the floor, the walls, and the ceiling. Yeah, so I just made it so it attacked the entire party, which would be sensible. Yeah. I should have made it so it attacked the, everybody in the entire party twice. Because that would have made more sense. Although That I might guess, have been overkill. I guess it would have just been like, it attacks you infinitely and in around. Because everything. Yeah. And you die. But, you know. Um, so there's a black pillar in the center of the room, and then there's a white mall. So they start just immediately attacking it, and somebody shoots the black pillar, which does absolutely nothing. Uh, one of my players actually tries to talk to it, which does work, but it's not going to let you go because it's insane. Yeah, so it's being psychopathic, but that caused a problem at your table, didn't it? Yes. So our one player, the fighter, starts talking to it, which he does talk. He, is, he actually plays with us on Sunday. Well, he role plays. Yeah, he role plays, and he's pretty good at it. Um, so he starts by asking, why are you trying to kill us? And responds, because you're food. And then later, it also responds, we shouldn't kill them, we should keep them as friends. And then they're getting multiple answers because this thing has multiple personalities. And it's just confusing them. Because they have multiple voices coming at them from the same creature. But and your issue becomes that you've got players at the table pissed off that you've got a person role-playing. In a role-playing game, yes. and they think, well, that's 15 seconds. We all should have had two attacks. Right? Yeah. And, and then they're trying to roll. It's like, no, no, you don't get to roll. Here's the thing. I favor role-play over combat, and I believe you figured that out, or at least should have, after being... Role-play, it's, it's an RPG. It's a role-playing game. Um... I mean, you've established that role play takes precedent. I established at my table that role play takes precedent. And I'm not going to let somebody sit there with a stopwatch and say, well, that's 15 seconds. I should have had two attacks. I'm sorry, too bad. Number one, this is all happening in the head, which is going to be instantaneous. Well, he was actually talking. No, but the conversation from that to you is instantaneous. Yes. And the conversation back, that's the role play, and the people at the table need to get over that. Yeah. So, if you have somebody arguing that, just tell them, look, it's a role-playing game. I'm going to let them role-play as long as it's not unreasonable. Because that's what we're here to do. It's not minis with combat. Yeah. And, I mean, this module is built oh, about role-play. And it'll pass how many? There's a, Most of the things here, you can role-play your way out of getting killed. Yeah. So, finish off the mall and let's move to week four. So, they actually kill it. After I've almost killed the bard and several other of the party members, it was kind of disappointing because he should have been a lot more powerful than he was. The problem I have with the mall, since it is the room and the walls, it should be able to close in and just eat them. Yes. That would make sense. But then again, if it closed in and eated, ate them, your, your party's re-rolling. Yes. So if they did it the way they should, and it should be able to kill them without a problem. Then It should be like them. an intelligence check before you enter the room, and then if you fail, then you're dead. game over. So, let's get back and to... I mean, it was the end of the night, so that would have been no issue. Let's get to week four now. Yeah. Um, so, my party week four, they, they, I had to stop combat. We took a picture of the table, so I knew where everything was, had everything laid out when we sat down, and we finished the combat. Now, we had one play, two players missing when we started on week four from week, for week three. I was missing my druid, which had a big spell in the room, which would have helped them out a lot. Yes. And I was missing a ranger. Now, I had another kid came in, he sat down, and I forget what he started to play, but um, it changed the dynamic of the combat. But what didn't change was the fact that those demons were coming down the hallway, and I had been nice to the party. My paladin, who's always down, he was down. 
my monk was frozen out of fear and failing her saving throws and about to be down. And the room, I, I was about where I wanted to be with a couple players that were going to be down. Well, the demons come in the room and that changed the dynamic of the combat. I throw a cloud kill and I made sure I centered it where it's going to kill the party and the demons. And they're getting rapidly hit. Yeah. Um, as soon as I started doing that, that's when the entire dynamic, it was almost a panic at the table. They're like, holy crap. Because I had not been playing the spells that I could have. Because I knew I could take two or three players down without it. Yeah. Because, I mean, this guy's got these legendary attacks. He's got all this stuff. He the moment, pound them the moment those demons come into the room, he's going to do a cloud kill. And they just fireball. Yep, that's what he started doing. Cloud kill, fireball, bam, bam, bam. And they got lucky. I couldn't roll for shit on some of the stuff. And they were beating my rolls. Yeah. And they were making their saves. So if they were taking damage, it was half damage. And some of the stuff that was happening, if you save, it's a permanent save. Like, he'll try to do fear on you. And if you save, you're immune for 24 hours. No. So there was a couple of them made their saves, so they were immune to that, and I, that took away some of that from me. Yeah. But they were making rolls. I was not making rolls. They ended up taking down. The now, last is it immune the, to fear for 24 hours, or is it immune to his power? It's immune to him, that power from him. Oh, okay. So I couldn't do that to them, and I, so I'm trying to cycle through the characters and do what I can, and my rolls were just horrible. I admit it. I couldn't do anything. Even the nuke die was rolling twos and threes. And you know that's a death die usually. Yeah. And, and it's called the nuke die because it has a little nuke symbol, not because it nukes the party. But I could not get a break, and they did. Which I was happy because I had two characters down. The rest of them were like half hit points or less at the end of that. And they were screwed. So we finished that up. They recovered as much as they could. They get the Paladin up. I mean, they're out of healing potions now. They all had healing potions at the start of this. They're all gone. Yeah. Um, the only thing that helped them is at the end of this week, after the next encounter that they finished, they did get to level up. Now, the level up, I'm not allowing them to count that as a short rest. I'm just giving it instantaneously. And they're still 15 points down if they're 15, whatever. All these drains apply. Yeah. Because there are no short rests in this unless you find certain areas or there are certain ponds in here that you can drink and it gives you the benefit of short rest. It doesn't exist. Um, and I'm being very strict about that. I want them to feel the urgency and I want them to play smart rather than thinking, oh, I can do this and I get my stuff back and bam, I'm fine. They, there needs to be urgency in this. Yeah. There really does. Um, but they finished with Tarlvar. They Not the first edition, go into a room for 45 seconds. And then walk out, take an extended rest. Yeah. Now, here's the, uh, here's the thing. They killed him off instead of giving him a quarter. He could have helped them out a lot. And there was even a room, a box in there that after they had killed him, he could have opened it, would have given them names of all the demons and stuff and all these, all this information. So what do they you do? Have the name of a demon you have. Exactly. Exactly. And what do they do? They kill him. The thief opens the box, unlocks it, and the first thing he does, he starts reading it. And that's got a spell on it that if you don't remove the spell, it explodes, destroys everything in the box, and everybody within a 10-foot radius gets blasted. And of course, that's what happened. So they lost something extremely valuable. Because they would have had control over a lot of demons. Because they went with the idea, he's a lich, kill him. Yeah. And that was well, not a good idea. You had a power in your party, right? He was down. He didn't have any choice. He was unconscious. Okay. Just so, leave him unconscious until the lich leaves the room. And he's a vengeance paladin, so... You know, he still has that ability he has as that a lawful, lawful neutral. If he has lawful good, which I am sure he does. No, he's lawful neutral. He took my advice when he built him out. Okay. So, he could have been... Not as horrible. Not as horrible. But uh, they got done that. They get through... Tarlvar's quarters, and they move, after they realize they screwed up, they collect their treasure, they actually picked up some spears and stuff, uh, I'm not, the rolls are not granting magic to my players, even though when you run the Dread Knights you have a chance of getting some magic and stuff like that, they're not getting it, um, but they moved and there's like a prison chamber after this, and they went in, there are a bunch of guys poking the demon and torturing him with spears, and they went in and they that, that room wiped out pretty quick. They did, because all those spears are magic, 
but they're only magic for two hours. So they have minimal, minimal magic, and it's not really going to help them. And that's pretty much where we left off. They, they clean, finished off Tarlvar. That combat took another solid hour in week four. But I'm still, I think, at least two rooms farther at this point than all the other groups. You guys are all like eight in. I'm 11 in. But it's because my party has role-played heavily. They talked through the vampire that first week. They talked through what they could. My party can't have really role-play. So you've what? got you've got one good role player. I, I'll even give you the bard. Yeah, he's he, he's a good. We role do have player. good role players. It's just the you fact have a that couple, we're in the ooze grottos. But you also have a couple players that I, I guarantee you, even if they could role play through it, they wouldn't. Yeah. Because uh, I've got one, the one guy you have who's oh I'm a barbarian. I'm just going to kill everything. And I I have to say, well, you're a barbarian. It doesn't mean you're a retard. It doesn't mean you're stupid. I mean Conan was smart enough to negotiate. I mean he would. He was a tactician. He would think things out forever. He would overthink it and make sure that he would win. Yeah. And your barbarian is just like, charge, kill, die. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that doesn't get you anywhere. But, uh, they so what did you guys do? They enter the next room, which is the Ooze Master. And he is apparently a gargantuan, which I think I'm going to have to unbox my stupid dragon. Which I'm completely fine with, but I need a gargantuan because we're having shit tons of those right now. I don't know that you're gonna, you're not gonna take a gargantuan dragon. We'll think of something else, make a counter or something to put down for your gargantuans. Yeah, I want a gargantuan. We don't have one, but um, they go into here and the ooze master is sitting in his red pillar, which is large, and I'm wondering how that works. It might be he's like in human form, and then when he Leaves, he's in gargantuan form. I don't know. Okay. Or no, it did say it was, it was a pillar. A, maybe he's engulfing it. No, it did say he's a red robed figure in the pillar. So, yeah, I guess he does turn into his real self. Yeah. He's out. So, um, he's there and they start talking to him. And he wants them to find whoever killed his white mall because he knows the white mall is dead. Yeah. And they're not going to say we killed the white mall. No. So he's like, bring me the heads of whoever killed the White Maw, and I'll give you immortality. And he would have. So kill the Barbarian and say he did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they get the bright idea of going to where the Red Wizards were, killing, chopping their heads off, disfiguring the faces. I don't know what sick idea brought that out. And then they give it to him. He tosses him in the Red Pillar. He absorbs every single memory, thought, and everything that that Red Wizard has ever had. And they, he knows that they lied. Yeah, but... But they didn't know the Red Pillar was going to do that. No, but he, they don't know that he knows that they did it. So he says, change of plan, you don't get to go to the White Pillar. You get to get your immortality now. Go into the Red Pillar. He wants to, them to go into that, start taking damage, die, and then he gets to know more about them. They don't believe it. He tries to give, suggest them to do it using a spell, but they save, and they initiate combat. But he has instinctive charm, so one of the party members is never going to hit, which ended up being the bard because he was a person that had one attack. But that happens, and they killed him pretty fast for what he was. He had like 300 hit points. And they see him reappear in the red pillar. And then they just ignore him and go into the next room. But he's going to be back. Right now they're, they are still convinced that the red pillar grants immortality. So they're going to... I believe it. Yeah. So what happens from there? And the warrior or the fighter that walked into the um, red pillar or through the portal, he's the one that thinks it's going to give them immortality. Good luck with that. So, um, also, if you just heard that and you are sitting at my table, because I know someone at my table actually listens to that, it's, if you play this and do use it at the table, I will kill you. Kill you. Yes. So, go ahead. So, you're supposed to role play and not think that. You could not go into the red pillar, but anybody else that goes in, they're fine. Anyways, they go into the black, or the elder black pudding room, which has the white pillar in there. And the elder black pudding is on the ceiling wrapped around the 
white pillar. So he's just kind of healing and he's already blind, so he doesn't care. So the party member goes, or the party goes up to the, or actually only to the bard and the fighter, goes up to the white pillar because they're the ones that are down right now and they start healing. Now up to the second to last, they were just fine. And then they heal all the way up, and now I have two blind party members. Yeah, because if you if it heals you beyond full hit points, you're blind. Yep. So, so now you're useless. Yeah, and that's when the elder black pudding decides to drop down and start attacking them. And he does insane amounts of damage to both of them. Now the funniest thing was, the fighter runs away because he knows he's useless. Yeah. The bard also runs away, but the opposite way. Because he's blind. Yeah. And the elder black pudding sees a massive amount of food over that way. So it goes that way. Now, they use lesser restoration on the fighter, which actually heals blindness. Or blindness. But that was the cleric's last spell. So the bard at this point is still blind. And just shooting randomly. He still has a pearl of power. He needs to remember that. Yes. I need to remind him of that tonight. Or tomorrow night, one of the two. Now, the the barbarian, or not the barbarian, the fighter. He takes. He's realized that his magic great axe doesn't take damage from these things, so he uses it. But the fact that its magic doesn't make it so that it doesn't split him and do no damage. So he splits into two huges, and then. I believe the ranger decides it's a bright idea to split it further. Well, he hit both of them and split both of them. Yes, so he does one slashing attack on that one and one slashing attack on that one, and now there are four. So did they eventually kill these things? No, we're still on the fight. still in that combat. Yeah, that's why I tried to avoid using that map in the entire Akon. So. But I have the ranger down, the fighter was down, and everybody else was messed up. And a blind bard. The bard's just over there. Cowering, are we winning? Cowering in a, what he thinks is a corner. Yes. No, he actually did go behind the white pillar. So, so is that the end of where you stopped? Yeah. All right. He's taking the healing. It's just like, oh, you healed up to max. You're more. Blind. So my party is moving up to level seven after last week because we did my, finish. You've got we have two tables where mid combat. It seems like that's the precedence we've set. Every week somebody's mid combat has well, to record because, has to record where they are and they pick up next week. So your table will go after you finish this combat to level seven. Yeah. And so well, my other. fighter. He actually was like, okay, I'm going to bring a level 7 of this character, and I'm going to bring a level 7 of another character just in case. <laughs> so he's ready to re-roll. Well, I've told everybody, bring extra characters because you're going to die. Yeah. But, you know, I haven't successfully killed anybody. I've gotten damn close. And I really think that by the time we're done this, we're going to have some new characters running around because there should be some death right. in here. Well, but that's it for week four. Tomorrow we'll start with week five. Our characters will be leveled up to level seven, and we'll be moving forward. Yeah. Also, uh, comments below any stupid things you've had party members or people playing for you do. Uh, and remember, like, rate, subscribe, like whatever all favorite that. Favorite, subscribe. Whatever the hell it is. Favorite, rate, it's all the same, because it always ticks up the pluses or minuses. Yeah. But uh, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. Bye.